Welcome to Body Bags and welcome to Theme Week here on Body Bags. This theme week we pit two legends, horror icons against each other, Bella Lugosi, to take on Boris Karloff and in the end we'll tally up the votes and see who wins between these two horror icons. You can pick a film starring just Bella Lugosi alone. A film starring Boris Karloff, or a film starring the both of them at the end. Like I said, points will be tallied, and we'll find out who the ultimate body bags horror icon is here at Theme Week. I picked this silly-ass film from 1952, directed by William Bodine, who did another film starring Bela Lugosi, Eight Man. He's done episodes of the classic TV series Lassie, and over 350 other films. Yes, William Bodine. And this stars Bela Lugosi, of course, playing Dr. Zabor. Duke Mitchell playing himself, and Sammy Petrillo playing himself, yes. Bela Lugosi meets a Brooklyn gorilla. Welcome to Body Bags. And welcome to Theme Week here on Body Bags. I'm your Thursday review of Chris from Chris B Movies. You know my name is Chris, and you know I love B Movies. This is a very silly film. This film is only an hour and 12 minutes. Now the Oval welcomes its day for being a really overly silly, over-the-top film. So I'm going to describe this one the best way I can. So um, Sammy Petrillo and Duke Mitchell playing themselves in this film. They're entertainers. They're singers and comedians. And they were um, going to do a show for the boys in Guam. But a little mishap on the plane happened. They fell off the plane. And luckily they had parachutes. And they got stranded on this island where they live off berries and fish for many months. Well, at one point they just passed out from exhaustion. And they're all fully bearded, and the tribes people find them, and they bring them to their, well, the living quarters. Now meet Nona, who, with her father, basically run the joint, okay? These are natives that just run this little village. And so they decide to clean them up, and when they wake up, <clears throat> um, they really befriend them. You know, they take them in as family, and... Uh, Duke Mitchell, he's kind of a wheeler and dealer. Yeah, he, he makes the moves for Nona, and Nona kind of likes him back. Uh, Duke Mitchell is really slick, if you've seen him in any other films. And so they have a really good relationship, but they want to get back to the States. And, of course, they want to get to Guam to do their show for the boys down there, because the boys have been working hard down there in Guam. In order to do that, they've got to try to find some type of boat that passes through the area for them to get them back to wherever they need to go. Along the way, they meet up with Dr. Zabor, played by Bela Lugosi, who is an evolutionist. He has devised this formula where he can turn humans into apes, monkeys into apes, and apes into monkeys. Now, at first, his serum doesn't go so well, but after a while, poor Duke Mitchell turns into an ape. So it kind of works, right? Um, <laughs> Dr. Zabor has this kind of like giant Igor type guy with him. Uh, called Chula, played by Mickey Simpson, who's basically the muscles behind uh, Dr. Zabor. And anything Dr. Zabor needs done, Chula help! <laughs> and Chula really talks like that. Chula help! Uh, <laughs> no! No turn Chula into ape! <laughs> He's this big, just giant, brainless monster. <laughs> but the question is, will Duke Mitchell and Samuel Patrol make it to Guam for their ultimate show? Or will they be stuck on this island, turn into apes, and never do another show again. We'll have to find out by watching Bela Lugosi meets a Brooklyn gorilla. Silly film. Overly silly. Uh, they make a reference in this film uh, when they first meet um, Bela Lugosi's character, Dr. Zabor. Um, <laughs> Sammy Petrillo and Duke Mitchell, who do play themselves in this film, by the way. And I did say that before. <laughs> Look at him. He's like, he kind of looks like somebody. What do you think he looks like? I don't know. That, that guy with the cape with fangs? Yeah, he kind of looks just like him. <laughs> Making, alluding to the fact that Bela Lugosi did play Dracula at one point in time. Oh yeah, the original bad boy Dracula. Oh yeah. <laughs> a lot of funny skits. A lot of the um, humor goes dry, but some of it is pretty humorous. Um, if you've ever seen a Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis film, basically, Duke Mitchell and Sammy Petrillo copy them. <laughs> Steal the spotlight. <laughs> Do a kind of worse version. <laughs> Jerry Lewis and D-Mon probably do a better version. But I kind of like this film over some of the, most of the D-Mon and Jerry Lewis films. I just think this film is overly silly, overly campy, and I freaking love movies like that. So, you know, what the hell. But what gets me is, 
Instead of coming up with their own original shtick, they copied the exact characters that Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin would play in their films. Um, so if you've seen this film, never seen any Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin films, um, watch some Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin films because <laughs> most of their jokes don't fall flat. But I, I kind of ha uh, have a sore spot for this film. I think this film is absolutely hilarious. The ending, you won't see coming. <laughs> but it's hysterical. It's absolutely hysterical. And it makes sense for a film done in 1952. I'm not going to ruin the ending for you, but if you've seen everything Bella goes, you've probably seen this film. This is overly silly. Um, basically, no one takes himself seriously in this film. Uh, Duke Mitchell and Sam and Petrello are big fans of Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis, and it shows in this film as they basically make fun of them and copy them to a T. <laughs> um, fun film. Like I say, an hour and 12 minutes. The Rebel Welcomes this day. That's a blast of a film, and Bela Lugosi is, is great as always. He just looked like he was having a great at all time. The guy who plays Chula, Mickey Simpson, I've seen him in a couple of other films, but he's awesome as Chula. And Nona is absolutely beautiful, played by the great Charlita, and you've probably seen her in other films as well. She's absolutely beautiful. And, you know, she kind of falls for Duke Mitchell's suaveness. Um, i got to say that Duke Mitchell, um, you know, he's, a, he's like the Dean Martin of this film. Um, <laughs> some of his songs are absolutely terrible. <laughs> they are absolutely atrocious. <laughs> They're so bad <laughs> that I, I couldn't help but laugh at a lot of it. But this is a fun film, man. You know, um, you get your boys around, you're drinking some colas, put this one in, you'll have a blast with it. And of course, if you have a granddad hanging around, he'd be like, is that Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin? He's like, no, no, that's not them. Oh my God, they're acting just like them. What's, what's the matter with these guys? <laughs> fun film, Bella goes to meet a Brooklyn gorilla. After what I told you, you can decide whether you want to see this one or not. All right, that's all I got for you. I'm definitely putting this one on the cheeseometer. This is what you call a B movie. A movie that's so bad it's good. Like, we get it. We get this, right? We get this. <laughs> From 10 being the best cheese you'll ever get to 1 being the worst cheese, I give it a solid 8. I've always loved this film. I've always had a good time watching this film. And although I've uh, admired uh, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis films, I don't quite like them as much as I like Bella Lugosi meets a Brooklyn Gorilla because to my estimation, no Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin film ever had Bella Lugosi in it and it ever had natives as cute as Nona. <laughs> oh, one other thing to note, um, Saloma, who's her sister, is kind of a heavy set girl. She goes after uh, Sammy Petrillo's character, you know, Jerry Lewis. And um, <laughs> he, he always has this disgusted look uh, when he sees it. He always like runs away from her and it's like, that's so awful. That's so mean. <laughs> Just because she's overweight. I, I, that's so mean. Anyway, check out Bella Lugosi meets a Brooklyn Gorilla. And check out all the other Body Bags reviewers. So far, they're knocking it out of the ballpark this week with Bella Lugosi and Boris Collar films. So check out all the other ones because this week is not done yet. We got Friday and we got Saturday and we got Sunday. And some heavy hitters on the way. Reviewing films from the classic artistes of horror. Oh yeah. And check me out next week because next week I'm going to bring something just fun to the table. It won't be themey, but it'll be something fun I'll bring to the table here next week. And don't forget to watch those late night horror movies. Read up on your latest Fright Max. Don't forget to tune in to another episode of the show we call Body Bags or I'll get Dr. Zabor to inject you and turn you into a gorilla. See ya.